Hi guys, Jeff Mike Benninger here. Remember me, March 26th. Today, cold Nickelbrook beer on my barbecue with that, a large hunk of bloody red meat. You asked about how you cook one of these. Let me show you how. First things first, it's dry. A little bit of Chef Mike's seasoning mix. By the way, Fred, you never told me how the Chef Mike seasoning mix actually worked. I was looking for a shout out there, never got it. Anyway, rub this in real hard. Notice how dry this actually is? It's not moist. This was salted three hours ago, and then left to sit. Here's the rest of the salt. Grind it all in here. Here's my barbecue. Look how hot my barbecue is. Look at that. Far side of the sun hot. Really, really, really hot. So, back it up. A little cooking spray. Pam's good. Plus it's kind of cool to make that sound. Away it goes back from the flame. Plop this all into 45. We'll come back and see in about three minutes. Now, here's the trick. You turn, then flip. We have 45 here. We're going to rotate 45 to a new spot of the grill that's nice and hot, which would be up here. That way you get really good lines. Watch this. See those lines? Put that right there. Now, don't touch it. Come back in three or four more minutes. Check it out now. This is dry aged, meaning it's aged in my fridge for two extra weeks after you bought it. What ends up happening is all the extra water evaporates away, but not the fat, so it gets nice and crisp. Take some more Chef Mike seasoning on top. Rub that in. Now we flip. Look at those beautiful lines. Look at that. Nice hot spot of the grill. Come back in four more minutes. First, we seared. Then we turned. Then we flipped. And this is where we are now. We use some of the oil off the beef to rotate it down. So we got lines and lines, those lines, and now we have these lines. And that's how you do cross hatching in a steakhouse. A little more Chef Mike seasoning on top. Gonna rub that in. Lid down, come back in four more minutes, then we rest for five. You gotta rest. So here we are. About 15 minutes in, I have a nice clean plate over here. I'm going to take this now, bring it inside to rest. Again, resting is one of the most important parts of this whole thing. Otherwise, we lose all the purge, those beautiful lines. Let that rest for five or six minutes, which gives me time to finish off the mashed potatoes and spinach. So here we have our plate, mashed potatoes, some wilted spinach. Wilted spinach takes like 45 seconds, so this can come in and rest. Then you can do all this stuff right here. Take some of your beef, slice nice and thin on the bias. Keep all the fat, nasty bits, which taste good, but are really, really not that good for you. Keep them under the middle. Just kind of pile them on nice. On the one side. Maybe a little bit of fat on top, because fat tastes good. And take some fresh cracked pepper around the other side of the plate. I put some gravy on there if we had some, but I don't have any gravy. You don't want any gravy. Wipe down the edges of the plate to get the fingerprints off. Just like that. Maybe you can take that fat off the top. You think so? Okay. That was Marilyn said that. She's smart. Anyway, so, gentlemen, dry aged roast beef. Chef Mike Benninger, Burlington, Ontario. It was great coming in in March. Looking forward to coming back again. Have a great time.